Pennsylvania is known as one of the most haunted states in the country. Filled with many important historical sites, it is also home to some high-profile ghosts as well. Most people have heard of Gettysburg Battlefield and the many spirits that still linger all over town. But today, we are going to look at some of the many other urban legends and hauntings the Brotherly State has to offer. In Chads Ford, Pennsylvania, just over the Delaware line is a road with such a dark past it has become known as the Devil's Road. Somewhere along this road is a mansion known as the Cult House. There are a couple different opinions of who owned the estate. One says the DuPont family owned it, while another says the Satanic Cult or the KKK owned it. The legends that say the DuPont family owned it say that they were an incestuous family, marrying their cousins to keep the wealth in the family. There are also rumors of the disfigured children living in the home. People who have visited the road claim that the house can be hard to find. You will know you are close to it when you see the trees that line the road face away, even from its primary light source, the sun. Among the trees is a skull tree or sometimes called the baby's cradle. The roots of this particular tree resemble a skull, leaving enough room to also be used as a baby cage. Legends say the DuPont family would leave their deformed babies to die under this tree. Other legends say the skull tree is where the satanic cult would leave baby sacrifices for the devil. There have been many claims of people who have found the tree they say they hear a baby crying. According to legends, the cult house is guarded by a fleet of red or black trucks or SUVs. It has been reported that if the house is found by someone, or even if you drive by it too many times, one of those vehicles will appear and run you off the road. It has also been stated that the vehicles have no drivers. According to legends, the woods off Trout Run Road in the area of Helm, or as some would say, Helm, is where the scene of a tragic asylum fire once took place. It is also the location of the Seven Gates of Hell. In the woods, half hidden by the undergrowth, at the bend of the road is the first gate. What makes this confusing is that there are two other gates right beside it, but the middle gate, the buckled iron one with a loose, rotten gate, is the one you're looking for. Legends say the gates two through seven are invisible during the day, but come night, you can find them as you go through the forest behind Gate Warren. Walking through the woods, you will come across a large circular clearing to your left that looks to be used by at least one coven of Wiccans. Legends say that the gates are deeper in the woods past this clearing. In the 1800s, a large mental asylum stood in the woods off a trout run road. One night, the asylum caught fire. Because of the remoteness of the building, firefighters were unable to get to the fire in time to save people. Many of the patients burned alive on the upper floors and hundreds of the others ran off into the woods. Search parties were sent after the patients, but because of the fear many people had towards asylum patients, when they were found, they were severely beaten with a lot of them being killed. Many people today believe the area is cursed. Local officials have constructed seven barriers along the path leading to the old asylum site, but most people never find the first one. Those that have at least found a path say there is a strong sense of evil and an overpowering feeling of death, which is enough to scare even the bravest away. There have also been reports of apparitions seen along the path as well as reports of unexplainable noises and menacing screams heard. 
Legends say if you manage to get past all seven gates, you will find yourself standing upon the burnt remains of the mental asylum and the passageway to hell itself. Harrisburg State Hospital first opened in 1851 and was known as Pennsylvania State Lunatic Hospital until 1926 when the name was changed to what it is today. There is not a lot of history known about the hospital, but it wasn't known for abuses like most others. It was known for its progressiveness. It was also nicknamed City on the Hill because it was virtually self-sufficient with its own farm, stores, and power plant. Harrisburg State Hospital closed its doors in 2006. Paranormal activity reported here includes screams, shadow figures, phantom footsteps, unexplainable strange noises, and objects moving on their own. The hot spots for activity are the morgue and the tunnels below the hospital. It has been reported that in the exam rooms of the morgue, Random, blood-like stains will appear without a seeable cause. In the tunnels, people have reported seeing shadow figures throughout. Chickie Rock County Park between Columbia and Marietta is the second largest regional park with over 422 acres and impressive views from the Overlook. With all its beauty, there are dark, eerie tales of curses, ghosts, and strange monsters. The earliest legends come from the Susquehannocks that once lived in the area. A Susquehannock native named Wanunga lived with his wife. One fall day, Wanunga left on a trading expedition. While away, his wife became friendly and fell in love with a local settler. The lovers would sneak off at night to Chickie's Rock to be together. When Wanunga returned home, he noticed his wife was acting strangely and he became suspicious. One night he saw his wife sneak off from their home and he followed her. Wanunga's worst fear was realized when he saw his wife in the arms of another man. To make matters worse, the other man was a settler. In a fit of rage, Wanunga took his tomahawk and repeatedly hacked the wife's lover, slit his throat, and threw him off the cliff's edge. Still furious over the betrayal, he grabbed his wife and tried to throw her over the edge, but in the struggle, they both went over to their deaths, with his wife screaming all the way. Legends say her screams can still be heard today. Wanunga has been reported to be seen silently moving through the night on his vengeful mission carrying his tomahawk. There are some that believe the native apparition is a warning to stay off sacred native ground. There are even reports of mysterious drumming heard by night visitors. To this day, no one has been able to locate its source. Another legend of Chickie's Rocks is the curse. Sometime at the end of the 19th century, three sisters lived in a small house on top of Cheeks Hill. Many believe the sisters were practitioners of the black arts. When plans were made to build tracks along the ridge, the only thing stopping them were the sisters. After purchasing all the parcels of land needed, the C&D attempted to buy off the sisters, but they refused every time. The trolley company convinced the local officials to give them the land through intimate domain. With no other choice, the sisters made a suicide pact. Before following through, they turned to the black arts for revenge and cast a spell from the sixth and seventh books of Moses to curse the land and bring death. After their suicide and construction began, there were several mishaps. One of these tragedies happened on April 9, 1896. That day, there was a concert held on the summit. Towards the end, a severe storm came through the area, which delayed the trolleys. 
When car number 61 finally arrived, it was overloaded with passengers eager to leave. The trolley's capacity was 28, but was loaded up to 80 people. After issues stopping at the first stop, the trolley began to climb a steep slope, increasing its speed. By then, the track was swarmed with potato bugs, which made the already wet track slipperier and the overworked brakes failed. The increased speed caused the trolley pole to leave the overhead wire which cut electricity. Taking the curve at 60 miles per hour, the trolley wheels left the rails, sending the trolley dropping over 30 foot embankment landing on its roof. The accident killed six people and injured 68 others. Many more deaths have taken place here since the trolley accident. Reports say that at least 12 people have died from falls or suicide between 1981 and 1990, before a fence was put up to protect hikers. There have been four more deaths since the fence was erected, with the most recent being in 2006. There are also many other spirits reported at Chickie's Rock, including a mummified ghost with no arms and arrows sticking out of his body, a man who died in a riverboat accident, and a tall, shadowy, silhouetted man wearing a fedora-style hat and flowing cape. There have also been apparitions of men seen at the foot of the cliff, believed to be former railroad and canal workers. Then you have the apple-loving apple witches. These creatures are described as being four to five foot tall, ape-like creatures covered in reddish brown hair. Reports of the Alba witches date back to the natives that lived in the area. These humanoids are said to sit in the trees and eat apples, sometimes throwing the cores at people. Legends say on Valley Creek Road near the Twin Tunnels is the entrance to the netherworld. Stories say that there was once a pair of red cast iron gates near Sawmill Road that led to an abandoned mansion with a grisly past. The mansion was the site of a family murder. The father shot and killed his wife and children. Since then, the house remained abandoned, left exactly as when the murders happened, right down to the bullet holes in the walls and doors. Rumors say that the bodies of the murdered family were buried on the grounds. Over the past 50 years or so, rumors began of various cult activities, Satanism and mafiosi in and around the old mansion. There are also stories that say that the portal for angels to descend into the underworld is located here. Since then, people who have visited the area have not found the cast iron gates, but there was a chain link fence that surrounds many abandoned properties. Reports from visitors say if you follow the gravel path into the woods, through the trails, there are no iron gates anywhere, but there are old stone ruins of various dwellings and plenty of no trespassing signs and yellow caution tape. Those who have climbed over the chain link fence around the larger property come back with tales of lanterns glowing in the abandoned building as well as being chased by dogs. Grumblethorpe was built in 1744 just outside of Philadelphia by a wine merchant named John Wisner. The home was originally a summer home, but became a permanent residence for the Worcester family. Thirty years after completion in 1779, Grumblethorpe became the headquarters of British General James Agnew. During the Battle of Germantown, Agnew was wounded and brought back to Grumblethorpe, where he died in the front parlor. His bloodstain still remains today. According to reports, People have claimed to see a black mist rising from the stain and move throughout the house. Others have claimed that while standing on the spot, they will hear moaning, 
especially on the anniversary of Agnew's death. Justina Hamburger is another spirit said to haunt Grumblethorpe. Legends say that she was an orphaned in 1793 yellow fever epidemic and the Worcester family took her in where she became the house manager. One of Justina's favorite things to do was baking bread. Every Friday night, she would be found baking bread to give to the poor on Saturday mornings. Late one evening in 1820, Justina appeared to the Whistner daughters, who believed she was at their other home at the time. The next morning, the family found out that Justina had passed away the night before. Since then, her presence has been reported often, usually on Friday evenings just after sunset, and she is usually accompanied by the smell of freshly baked bread. Visitors are not the only ones to experience the paranormal activity here. Staff has reported seeing black shapes spinning low to the ground moving from room to room, which seem to match the descriptions that have been reported near James Agnew's bloodstain. Other reports include shadow figures and the figures or eyes in the dining room mirror. The Fulton Opera House was built in 1852 on top of the pre-revolutionary war jail to serve as a meeting hall and performance venue for the city of Lancaster. The building is more deeply seeped in history than that which started with the opening in 1852. Over the years, the building has served as a meeting hall, movie theater, live performance venue, and concert hall. Many famous people have taken the stage, including Marcel Marceau, Mark Twain, Helen Hayes, and Al Jolston. In addition to being an historic landmark, the Fulton Theater is also a haunted hotspot in Lancaster. People have reported hearing phantom applause and seeing the piano play by itself. Others have reported seeing the ghost of Sarah Bernhardt and Marie Cahill throughout the building. There are also reports of screams heard, which are believed to be from the Native Americans who were slaughtered by a mob during the prison days. Fort Mifflin sits just south of Philadelphia along the Delaware River. The British first built the fort in 1772. During the Revolutionary War, it was used by the U.S. to protect Philadelphia, the nation's first capital at the time, from a siege of British ships. In November of 1777, the fort was destroyed in a battle after an estimated 1,000 rounds of cannonballs every 20 minutes hit the fort. 20 years later, Fort Milfin was rebuilt. During the War of 1812, it was used as a garrison, and then during the Civil War, it was a prison. Today, it is a tourist attraction with tours, reenactments, and public and private paranormal investigations. There are many reports of paranormal activity throughout the fort. On the second floor balcony of the barracks, people have reported seeing the spirit of a lamplighter carrying a long pole with a dimly flickering light on the end. The casement, which was one of the most bombarded areas during the 1777 siege, is reported to be the site of many spirits, too many to count. Many of the visions are pale outlines that could easily be written off as figments of your imagination if it weren't for the frequency. The most visible apparition, the faceless man, is still missing some detail. Many believe he is William Howe, a former prisoner from the Civil War that was hung for killing his superior and for desertion. Reports say that you can clearly see all of him except his face, which appears to be in shadows. It is believed the reason he has no face is that during those times, deserters' heads were tied up in black rags as a mark of their shame. The loudest spirit of Fort Mifflin is the Screaming Lady. 
Nobody has seen her, but you can definitely hear her wailing in the old officer's quarters, regretting disowning her daughter. It is believed that the wailing is from Elizabeth Pratt, who was a neighbor of Fort Mifflin in the 18th century. According to reports, Elizabeth renounced and threw her daughter out for taking up with an officer. Shortly after, her daughter died from dysteria. Consumed with guilt, Elizabeth took her own life. In the blacksmith shop, the rhythmic sound of a hammer against the anvil is reported. The sound stop when people peer into the empty, but still slightly echoing room. Hillview Manor opened its doors in 1926 as a replacement for the aging Newcastle City Home with Perry and Mary Snyder, who had previously been in charge of the Newcastle City Home, now in charge of the new one. The Snyders moved into the building along with their two children and 12 staff members. When the facility first opened its doors, 20 residents moved in. They were typically people with mental illnesses the homeless, or the elderly that had no other family. These people were referred to as inmates, not patients or residents. The Snyders ran the facility until 1944 when the county welfare officials decided they were no longer competent because of their age. They were forced to retire with pensions, but three months later they were forced to finally vacate the property. In the 1960s, Hillview Manor underwent some conversions and once completed was a skilled nursing center. The facility remained open until 2004. People who have investigated Hillview Manor report hearing doors slamming shut, phantom footsteps, and disembodied voices. Others have reported hearing scratching and seeing objects move from one location to another on their own. One of the ghosts reported is said to be a boy about five or six years old that they call Jeffrey. Legends attached to him say that if you see him, you will die. The spirit of an older man is said to be in the boiler room. It is said that he doesn't like anyone in his area and will order you to leave. In room 105, the presence of Mary Virginia is said to be felt by many. Mary was a former resident and her room still has a bed, chair, and a bedstand in it. There are also many dolls and other items that have been left by visitors to her room. Other reports include misty or shadowy figures, sounds of people running down the halls, and people staring out the windows of the empty building. The Battle of Brandywine occurred on September 11, 1777, near Chaz Ford. The battle was one of the largest, with over 30,000 soldiers fighting, as well as one of the longest at 11 hours in a single day of the Revolutionary War. Today, the battlefield sits along Highway Route 1 in Delaware County, Pennsylvania, and comprises of 50 acres, which includes Washington's headquarters, the Gideon Gilpin House, and a museum. The center of the paranormal activity is the battlefield itself, where over 2,000 men died on the bloodiest day of the Revolutionary War. Battle sounds and apparitions of soldiers and horses have been reported. Many of the farms, inns, and homes of the era still stand today, with many people reporting various paranormal activity in them, especially the ones closest to the battlefield.